Hello, welcome to Everyday HDR once again. This is the free tutorial Friday. Uh, today I want to focus on the importance of post-processing an image. On the left you have your ordinary straight out of the camera raw file of a doorknob at a shop in Weston, Missouri. On the right you have a pretty crazy looking image of a doorknob from a shop at Weston, Missouri. It's still the same doorknob but it just looks ten times better. Um, and you can do this really easily with just some pretty simple te post-processing techniques. So let's go ahead and look at the HDR image. I didn't go very strong on the HDR. I went pretty subtle on the HDR for this one because I'm going to do a lot of post-processing to this image. And the, m the higher I go on the HDR side, the more I have to worry about uh, noise and, and working on that. And I, I don't really want to do that. So we go ahead and minimize this and minimize your ordinary image and let's get right into this. So I call this technique the extreme soft light technique because we're going to use soft light extremely well. Uh, I don't know where I got the name extreme soft light from but uh, it's just a little brief history for you. So first thing I want to do is duplicate the layer. Once I duplicate the layer I'm going to go to uh, noise, go to filter, noise, and go to reduce noise this is usually where I keep my reduce noise at uh, about a strength of 2, preserve details at 53, reduce color noise at 92, and sharpen details at 29. It's not rocket science, I just like the results I get from it. A lot of times with this stuff it's subjective, it's, it's whatever works for you and whatever works for your imagery. And we just wait. I just wish you could just like pull this over like come on dude come on oh uh, you're almost there you're almost there just go and the more I ask it to the slower it goes ah perfect okay so now what we want to do is put a vignette on this I know vignettes are pretty cliche but vignettes do a great job of narrowing your attention right to the subject that you want so I'm going to go ahead and put this vignette pretty high up on the amount and then on the uh, midpoint I'm, I'm gonna go about here I don't want to go all the way over because I just create this giant hotspot that puts me right in the center of the image I don't want a central image location I want the edges to be to be darkened but I don't want them to be so darkened that the center of the image pops out in front of my face so that's about good so now I'm gonna duplicate this layer twice first time second time first time go to your blending options and go to soft light. Second time, again, go to soft light. But this time, I'm going to take that soft light and put it down to about 50%. So if you haven't noticed, this is where the extreme soft light part comes in because I've used soft light to the extreme twice. I'm going to use soft light again, but I'm going to duplicate the back, uh, the layer one because that's the one that has the noise uh, reduction on it. Bring it up to the top and do a high pass sharpen on that. But first, I'm going to set it to soft light. Imagine that. So go to filter, go to other, go to high pass. And let's put that at like 5-ish. Uh, I usually don't go any higher than 5, so let's keep it at like 4.9, so I'm not going higher than 5. Press OK. So now we have a pretty decent image going on so far, but uh, what I want to do is I want to start playing with the vibrance on this and start pulling things out a little bit more and reducing some of the saturation and the vibrance. And go to about 24 or 25 ish with that and then bring the saturation down and overall I don't want to go high that's gross Ugh. that makes my tongue tingle I'm gonna go about mm, negative 15 or so that works for me so the next thing I want to do is add a levels adjustment and I'm gonna take this levels I'm gonna take the midpoint down or just take it up a little bit oh that looks good ah, that's right where it was imagine that I want it right there. And then let's pull some of that color back in. So we're really getting deep into this color here. Go to curves. I want like a really dark curve. Because I really want those edges to pull you right into the center. Or off center. The way this image works is it pulls you into the center. But the center has this nice beam going across right here. And you've got the an adjacent parallel line right here so your, your immediate attention goes to there and then boom right back to this catch light that's going on here and don't worry about how ugly the doorknob looks right now we're gonna fix the doorknob 
and what I'm seeing now is that I've got a lot of saturation going on in my reds and they don't look nice to me so I'm gonna go to hue saturation change master to reds and bring down that saturation in the red and then also darken the red a little bit so I get a nice dingy red I don't want that bright vibrant red you can see the difference you got that bright vibrant red that steals your attention from the doorknob and now you have this dingy dirty looking drab red that's what I'm looking for so now let's go back to this curves layer I don't like what the curves layer has done to my doorknob it's made it uh, too contrasty and a little bit too saturated so I'm gonna go to my brush you can press B to go to your brush also and in my brush I'm gonna select um, about 300 pixel size brush and a hardness of zero so I really I want a really soft brush I do a, a most of my editing with a soft brush because it really does kind of fade the sides in a little bit. A hard brush, you can tell the difference. Um, let me just show you. So, um, you can press Alt and press the right bracket key. Actually, no, you can't. Ah, Shift and right bracket key. Sorry. I got these Alt, Shift, and Control things all messed up all the time. If you press Shift and right bracket key, you're going to get a hard brush. You see how you can see what's going on? It's, it's a very hard edge brush and I don't like that I want a soft edge brush so if you press shift and the left bracket key when you're on your brush it's gonna give you a nice faded brush so when I do my edits they get that faded edge to them they look a little bit more natural so now I'm gonna go to my curves uh, mask that's already provided for me here and I'm going to paint in with my my brush very slowly now I have a, a Wacom tablet and that really helps me uh, look at how much pressure I'm giving to the area that I'm painting so it's kind of unfair for me if you're working with just a mouse then you have to do a little bit more work than I do but my, my uh, Wacom tablet works off of the pressure of my hand onto the tablet now let's take a look at this mask I thought I was painting pretty well in this area on the knob but if we hold alt and click on the curves mask we see that I've missed a lot of these white areas. I need to fill those in. And don't freak out, get frantic. You can just press Alt and click on it again, and we've brought back our um, image without the mask preview. And I'm going to do the same thing for levels because I like how that doorknob looks with the levels uh, docked. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to right click on my curves and say Add Mask to Selection. And then I'm going to fill this uh, mask on my levels with black so go to edit and then go to fill you can press shift F5 if you like shortcuts I like shortcuts I just didn't do it for this one press OK and you see what it's done is it's filled everything outside of our selection with black that's okay because you can just press you can click on your mask and press control I and it reverts it right back to where it was so this is where I want to be with this image uh, you can see I've gone from the plain Jane to the pretty cool looking doorknob now this is much more t enticing to me if I was at a gallery and I saw these two side by side I probably wouldn't buy the one on the left but on the one on the right if I wanted a picture of a doorknob I think I would buy this one so I hope that helped you with the importance of post-processing and how you can turn a plain Jane image or an ordinary image because I don't really like the term plain Jane because I feel sorry for anybody named Jane um, how you can turn an ordinary image into a pretty stellar, kick-ass looking product. Alright, take care.